I mean, we talk about, oh, you know, women emasculate men, but what does that really mean? What does that mean? And I think we probably drew a little bit more awareness to that is how you do it without even, even realizing it. Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. Once again, I want to welcome back Sandy Weiner, the founder of Last First Date and the author of Choice Points in Dating. Sandy, once again, thanks so much for being here. I am so excited for today's topic, Sofa. Yeah, it, well, it's an important one. And I think our men are going to, hopefully they'll appreciate it. <laughs> because this is definitely directed at women, something that, uh, well, that we unknowingly do. Uh, that absolutely hurts our relationship, and that is emasculate men. And you and I talked here at the beginning that, um, you know, I can relate with, with what you wrote here and did so much. So let's talk about that, and let's see if we can help some other people identify this, this sort of behavior. Do you want to explain what emasculating men exactly is? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, it's when women do things, and usually it's unknowingly, mm -hmm. that make men feel less like a man. They take over for him. They do things that sort of put him down, disrespect him in some way that is not usually so clear to the woman, but it makes a man feel really bad. And the men may not even realize how to name it either. And it often leads to self-sabotaging and sabotaging dates and relationships. And if we can name it and understand it, we can create healthier relationships. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like you said, and, and many times it's unknowingly. I mean, obviously, if you're, you know, in the throes of anger and you say stuff to put put each other down, that that's more obvious. But simple things, simple things like you had a great example, the driving example. Tell us about that, <laughs> that one. And then we'll go through some more specifics. Uh, a lot of women don't like that men don't stop for directions. <laughs> I would say that that's a big one. And then women yeah. will school the man. Oh, no, you should have turned left. You should go the way I think you should go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do this with, you should put the cheese in this part of the refrigerator. You shouldn't do this. I mean, just telling people how they should do things mm -hmm. is really just saying, I don't trust you to do it the way you do it. Look, if the man keeps taking you the wrong way and it's taking two hours to get to a place where it should take 10 minutes, then, then we really need to have a conversation. But men also want to figure it out by themselves. I mean, now we have navigation systems, so we don't really <laughs> need to be told what to do, but, oh, well, why did you choose that way to go on, on the yeah. GPS? You know, that yeah. can happen too. Yeah. I actually, the other day I, I turn on my, like he has a navigation in his car and then I, what should I turn on mine just in case? I, I, why do I do that? <laughs> So do, I think the driving is a great example. And I really look forward to our comments on this, about what our mm. men think, because I, I truly, we're joking, we're laughing, but this is very serious. And, and I think we can raise some awareness here that maybe, you know, we'll, we'll save some relationships, certainly some arguments in the future. Let's talk about 10 specific things that you have here that I think are great examples that we may not be aware of that we're doing. Uh, this is interesting, withhold respect or kindness to to motivate him to do better. That, that, uh, that one threw me a little bit. What do you mean by that? Yeah. So I think a lot of us grew up in homes where we think, oh, if we're, if we're not respectful or kind, we're going to be motivated to be better children, right? How many of our parents withheld kindness to motivate us? You know, if, we're be if we're mean, we're going to make him want to do better. And that doesn't work. You know, respect is so motivating. But mm -hmm. for some reason, people think that being mean or icing somebody out or doing something like that can motivate him to be a better person. Interesting. Yeah, I, that, that one I couldn't identify with. But, mm -hmm. you know, again, interested to hear what people say. Uh, keep repeating how childish he is. That comes up a lot, huh? It does. You're being such a baby. I mean, especially like when men get sick and women say, oh, my husband is my boyfriend is a baby. Such a baby just doesn't take care of himself when he's sick. 
that's not very kind. And it's, it might feel like that to you. Maybe he's grown up in a home where his mother took care of him when he was sick and he doesn't know how to take care of himself. And you can work with him on that, but don't, don't put him down. Hmm. Interesting. Complain about his job or salary. Gosh, I can't imagine doing that. Yeah. Well, a lot of times, let's say you're in a long-term relationship and the person doesn't really care about getting a raise or uh, Mm. he's not happy in his job and you feel like you're doing all the work and then you're putting him down because he's not motivated enough or he hasn't had the guts to ask for a raise. So instead of complaining um, about what he's doing or he's not doing, um, we'll talk in a few minutes about how to actually do the right thing and motivate him to do better if that's what you're trying to do. It's so funny when you said that. I said, oh, I can't imagine doing that when you explained it, did it <laughs> in my first bit, <laughs> big time, big time, yeah. because I was yeah. getting sick and tired, you know, again, whether it's right or wrong, but now I can identify. Mistrust his ability to handle things on his own. Oh God, we do that all the time, don't we? <laughs> yeah, I need to fix you. I need to do it for you. I don't trust you. I remember recently I was at a dinner and talking to this woman who I don't know very well was like a a group of people getting together. And she said, you know, my boyfriend has ADD and he, he just doesn't remember to do anything. So I have to remind him all the time and it makes Mm. me crazy and it makes him angry. And she said, you know, he, he, people tell me I'm controlling and I don't know. And I said, well, you are. You are. And she was like, oh, I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, again, we're laughing a little bit, but that we don't realize how controlling we are. And again, I'm talking, I'm pointing at me. This has been such a revelation, such a revelation to me when I thought I was being helpful. Talk about help, ask him for help, <laughs> then tell him he's doing it wrong. Huh? <laughs> right. I remember when I was raising children and I would ask my husband to take the kids out and give me a break. And he would take the kids out. He would pack the bag and he would forget stuff. He didn't pack it the way I would pack it. So I would get upset. Then I realized, hey, wait a minute. He's taking the kids out. Nobody's going to (laughs) die. He is taking the kids out. Like, do not school your man on what he's doing wrong, especially if you've asked for help, let him do it his way and appreciate him for it. Yeah. Just, just bite, bite, bite down on a piece of you know rubber or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can definitely identify with that. Oh boy. And I'm not saying it's right. I, again, I can't wait to hear the comments. Uh, you know, we'll go through some more here, but add your own, let us know what it, both men and women here, uh, well, nag him or boss him around. Uh, and I'm going to combine two here, nag him and boss him around, treat him like he's a Neanderthal with no feelings. That kind of goes hand in hand. Well, the feelings thing, I think women have been wrongly schooled to believe that men have no feelings. Men have feelings. Men are people too. And I think (laughs) when you think that, oh, he's just like, I mean, I've heard women talk about their their significant others like, 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 like he's some kind of caveman. And yeah, he says, yeah, he wants to go to his room and, you know, uh, read a book. Uh, You know, it's like, (laughs) (laughs) but like, that's really disrespectful. And it's men have feelings, men have feelings. They may not be able to express it because they haven't been trained to express their feelings, but that's something that we can help each other with instead of nagging, bossing him around, treating him like he's some kind of primate, which I mean, we are, but he's not a caveman. <laughs> yeah, that uh, it's and we do we, we, we do that. I'll, I'll admit it. I absolutely will admit it. And it's, and it's it is unintentional. It's not meant to hurt. It's meant to right. communicate. <laughs> ah, um, compare him to other men or your exes. That would that's Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So when you say, well, you're not like, let's say, uh, oh, my ex was great in bed. I mean, you would think that somebody would never say that, but people have said, you know, what's wrong with him? You know, my ex was, was really good in bed or my ex used to help a lot in the house and you're not helping. And my ex did this, my ex did that, and you're not that. And that just either men or women doing that, it's a terrible thing to do. Yeah. 
No, it is. Uh, oh, this is good to offer him unsolicited advice. Boy, is that me? <laughs> well, men tend to do this a lot too. So yes. I would say anybody who gives advice without being asked or mm -hmm. checking in first it's a boundary crossing. It is yeah. saying, I, I'm just going to offer you this because you need my advice. Mm -hmm. And it's annoying. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I grew up in the home with a lot of this. And look, I, I'm a fixer. I'm a helper. I'm a coach. I want to help everybody. Right. But I had to right. learn not to give it without being asked first. Right. And so mm -hmm. even with my daughter who was going through like a terrible breakup a while back, and I just said, hey, when you're ready, when you're ready, to <laughs> come go. to me. Yeah. I have lots of great tools, right. but just to now go, you know what you should do? Yeah. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. That that is really not mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. I I did learn that. I do ask now. Well, if, if if you'd like my advice, I do I do preface things like that. But that that That's was good. a good one for me. Uh, yeah. the, lastly, here number ten, criticize how he spends his downtime. Boy, that would really that would get to me too. Men do yeah, that. We to all, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, a lot of these are not just about mm -hmm. women doing it to men, but yeah. it's when, you know, men really need their downtime just as mm -hmm. women do. And I think a lot of women who maybe their significant other is working all day and then he wants to have some downtime, mm -hmm. he should take it and you should right. be grateful that he knows that he has to decompress. Mm -hmm. because it will make him better when he's with you. And so how he decides to use that downtime, if he wants to do video games and you're not into video games, that's not in your business. Mm -hmm. If he's addicted to them, that's a different issue. It's but different like, issue, yeah. really, just downtime is downtime. We all need our space and time. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's a great, great, great point. I'm, I'm going to assume that there were a few things here that uh, resonated with both our men and our women. And again, I'd love to, love to hear from you. But let's talk about you have here five ways to stop emasculating men and create healthier relationships. Number one, stop trying to control. Yeah, control is a facade. We all, many of us have this yeah. need to try and control things. Mm -hmm. So instead of controlling, trust your man to figure things out the way that he is going to do them. Like I gave that example with the, the diaper bag, it, you know, men have a way of driving. Men have a way of doing things. Their people talk about it, talk about it without trying to say you're wrong. That's yeah, control. I mean, lots of things came up uh, for me here, and I'm sure there are will for others. Look for the best in him. That's really good advice. Well, and each other. Look for the best in each other, probably. Yeah, we forget to notice the good. We're so used to focusing on what somebody's doing wrong that when you say, Well, thank you so much for this, thank you for helping to support me in this way instead of always looking for the worst when you focus on what that person is doing well then he's more likely to do more of that as in, instead of focusing on what you're criticizing because criticizing just makes people shut down it does it absolutely does which is i think one of the signs that you can tell in your relationship if you if you're uh if you're feeling like that your guy or your significant other has stopped communicating with you or is not communicating enough or is not sharing things from work or what he did, that could be a sign that, uh, you know, emasculation, if you will, has affected your relationship because he's tired Definitely. of being criticized. Yeah. Uh, well, we've already covered um, or basically don't give unsolicited advice. Yeah. So the check-in, you know, that yeah. you, you said now you check in before advising. It's just... Right. Asking somebody, you know, and, and especially this came up in my Facebook group recently where a woman was saying that this man was, was that she's been dating for a while was venting about a bad day at work. And she's like, mm -hmm. I'm in HR. I want to advise him. That's what I do for a living. And I don't know how to stop. And she felt like it was going to ruin her relationship, but she didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so the advice was to ask him what he's looking for. Listen with empathy. Are you looking for advice? Are you looking to just vent? Do you just want to get this off your chest? Yeah. Give him empathy. This sounds hard. That sounds like you're going through a lot. Yeah. How can I support you? And that's just a nice thing to do versus, yeah, taking over. I, I agree. Uh, that if you ask for help, if you're asking for help 
accept how he supports you. Like we said, don't, you know, don't tell him how to do it then. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise he's going to stop giving you help. Um, and that's, that's what happens a lot. You know, like you said, people will shut down if they're not, if they're not supported, if they're not told that what they did was helpful, they're just going to stop offering. And so just accept, thank you so much. Yeah. You know, sometimes you may want to have a conversation about the type of support you get, but do it with kindness. This comes up so often in comments or in other videos too, that it does surprise me. I, I think maybe it is more of a female trait than a male that, uh, you know, falls into the bitching category. <laughs> uh, mm. And it's, it's really something to be aware of, definitely something mm -hmm. to be aware of. And again, I'm, I'm pointing fingers right here as, as well. <laughs> and then be direct instead of nagging. Tell him what you want and need and then give him the space to provide. Very few people are direct. It's mm -hmm. so much harder for people to, first of all, clarify for yourself, what is it that you really want? And it takes work. Look, I, it took me decades to learn the skills that I have today. And I still can get triggered. I can mm -hmm. nag people because I'm not, I don't feel like I'm being heard. But if you are direct and you then give him the space to do what you asked or push mm -hmm. back and say, you know what, that's not something I can do. Be okay with that. Like if that's, yeah. if that's not going to work for you, then you have decisions to make too. But if you're constantly nagging, it just makes people mm -hmm. feel emasculated. It makes them feel childish. It makes them feel like you're their mom. I know people who also get into relationships later in life and they feel like the person that they're married to is relying on them too much because they were used to that in their past relationships. Mm -hmm. Well, if mm -hmm. you don't want that, then don't nag. Um, mm -hmm. Don't don't do everything that person wants, but tell them how you picture this relationship and how you could get there together. Well, I think the, we're starting to come to the end of the segment here. I think the biggest message for me is just the awareness of this. I mean, we talk about, oh, you know, women emasculate men, but what does that really mean? What does that mean? And I think we probably drew a little bit more awareness to that is how you do it without even even realizing it. I mean, just a couple of these were, you know, I needed to hear that again, <laughs> because I certainly, you know, didn't do it maliciously. Uh, Sandy, what what would you add on the segment? Is there anything I didn't ask? I mean, I think we covered most of it. But I, I want to say that if you grew up in a home where there was emasculation, and many of us have, where our parents, our mother didn't know how to express her needs or tried to express them and they weren't met. And so she started to put down your father or maybe she just did it in front of you and not directly to him. Mm -hmm. It's, we, we get it from somewhere, right? And mm -hmm. we hear it from other people. So just kind of connect the dots, be aware. Like you said, the awareness is always the first step in any kind of self-growth. Yeah. And, and if you s slip up, because when you're starting to change behavior, you will slip up. That's absolutely okay. And give yourself some grace and just say, whoops, I'm so sorry. I nag you again, or I criticize you. I didn't mean to. Let me, let me have a do over. I like that. I like that a lot. Sandy, thank you. Always appreciate your time. We'll link to all of your information, to your website, to make sure people can get a hold of you directly. And of course, your book, Choice Points in Dating. Great read. So thank you again. And we'll see you again soon on Second Act TV.